Let's get some music up. It's time for Clubhouse Chatter. Here's Norm Ordez. All right. So here we are for the final show of today. And we have, you know, baseball. You come across a bunch of guys who you see around for five, six, seven years. And then all of a sudden they drop off the planet and you never see them again. Today I have one of those guys. And for a handful of years, he was pretty dang good. And his name is Kevin Minch. Did I pronounce your name right, Kevin? Yes, sir. And uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. <laughs> so you ha- you had, man, there was a couple of seasons to where you had a couple of 24, 25 home run seasons, and you were one of those players who, like, seemed like in a flash of the pan you were gone and you were, you were done. What, did you get hurt, or was it just your, your career just? No, I just, I was in someone just needed a lot of the best. You know, there's, some people are wired differently. I just need a lot of at bats to be able to uh, to produce. You know, you give me 500, 600 at bats, I can do that. You know, I wasn't someone that could play once a week. You know, and expect to you know produce at the rate I was producing. So you you were playing for the Rangers at a time to where they were fairly loaded. I mean, we're talking Mark Texera, Michael Young, A Rod, um, Juan Gonzalez, Palmero, and another guy who. You know, for me, you know, he was Hank Blaylock. Hank Blaylock was a superstar in the making, as were you, and and Hank was another one of those guys. I don't know if it was because he got hurt or just one of those at-bats guy as well, but Hank kind of disappeared off the scene. I don't, you know, we were talking, I was talking with Michael Young about that the other day. You know, nobody knows where Hank is. Nobody knows what happened to him. Um... You know, the last I had heard, you know, someone had seen him in Vegas at a at a, at a card table. That's huh. the last I had heard anybody. So I, I don't, I don't know. You know, a lot of the guys that I've played with, um, you know, I haven't really, you know, kept in touch with. I mean, you've tried to over the years, but it, it's it's just hard because, um, you know, they some they said some of the guys just get lost. Right. I'm sure the Rangers have tried to reach out to him, and with no success. I think even Mikey has as well. Yeah. I mean, you you played you you played with some interesting guys, and you know you played with um, you know Chad Croyder, who's one of my favorites. He was um, when I went to work in baseball. He was originally scheduled to be the manager at Modesto in 2006, but he accepted the USC head position, and so I got to know him a little bit. But um, Ruben Sierra, you know, not one of my favorite. Doug Glanville, who's now yep. Doug Glanville is what ESPN, I believe, and yes, does a sir. great job. Um, Carl Everett, I think Carl Everett is probably one of the most misunderstood people in baseball. You know, Absolutely. you always seemed you always yeah, you seemed know where that comes from? Where's that? That comes from the that comes from the media. Yeah, that's the media. And he was always played off as this hothead, but I met him a couple of times. Nice guy, really nice guy. Very nice guy. Even John, same with John Rocker. Right. Yes. I, mean, I, I played with both of those guys in the same season. Yeah, I, I've chatted with Rocker a couple times, and he's he's a great guy as well. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it's too bad. I mean, he will tell you how it is. Yep, and that's yeah, okay. He can be abrasive. And that's okay. And so, so what, so you are the pride of Delaware. You are a blue hen. And I, I'm trying yes. to remember, there was a blue hen story, a Delaware story. I can't remember. I think it was... Back in like the mid seventies, when Neil Lomax was quarterback at Portland State, there was a couple of years to where they dropped like a hundred on somebody, and I for for some odd reason I think Delaware was one of those teams. Unfortunately, um, but that's where I remember Delaware. But I know you know football and baseball wise, they're pretty decent now. Yes, I mean, the football and baseball coaches were there respectively, I think, 30-plus years. Tommy Raymond, you know, the, the man who revolutionized the wing tee. Yep. And uh, Bob Hanna, and, you know, my the baseball coach when I was at Delaware, um, he got 2,000 wins my junior year when we were there. So, I mean, he, he had been there a while. So, I mean, those guys had been around. Just, I mean, it's not a lot of us. Right. I think, uh, you know, the last really homegrown talent would have been it would be Elena Deladon. Wow. Wow. 
<laughs> what was? And actually, she. I mean, she was there. Went to Delaware. She went to. You know, she went to Ursula Academy, which is an all girls school in the conference that I played in, um, the Catholic conference, and uh, so, you know, then went to Delaware. So I mean, she. That's really it, as far as you know, the recent you know homegrown kids that have made it, um, you know, and had some success. Right. What was what was your most memorable moment in your baseball career? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's it's tough to say, just because it's you know the record that you you know that you know the home run streak. You know that's something that could always be broken. You know, it's records are made to be broken. That's yeah. but so, so I don't know. I don't you know I don't know. I think just. You know, you see that as a kid, the experiences you see. I remember playing, we were in a Little League Regional Final in 1990 and getting, you know, to sit down with Johnny Bench got to talk to our whole team. You know, and seeing those guys and, you know, going, yeah, one day I'd like to, you know, to be, to be at that level. You know, you never really know until you get, until you get old enough to, you know, and then I think I got into college and, you know, I realized, I started playing well and, you know, and realized that I could, uh, you know, maybe I can do this. Right. Right. Do you have uh, do, do you have a favorite bar, ballpark that you played at? The atmosphere at Wrigley is probably the best. I mean, they they were the fans there. They really their ballpark. I mean, they know like your whole if your whole uh, the whole family history. I mean, they go up it. Like they they throw on like ancestry dot com, I guess, when they're doing it because they know they know about everything. So I mean, but they're they're very well well educated. A lot of bitterness. I mean, that's a yeah. hundred years of animosity. Yeah. do that to you. Um, but that, that feel, but probably the whole atmosphere total, I think Seattle is probably my favorite. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's funny because I, I get mixed, you know, from ball players, I get mixed, um, mixed uh, signals, you know. I mean, Wrigley, definitely, you know, plane wise, but, you know, the clubhouse and stuff like that isn't very, isn't very good, you know, compared to like your newer ballparks. But, you know, like I said, as an atmosphere, it's, it definitely ranks up there. Well, most of the lot now, they, you know, these new ballparks, these kids are spoiled. Yes. You know, they don't know what it's like to go play in, you know, like an old Tiger Stadium or old Yankee Stadium, you know, where it's just, you know, you're down in the bowels where the tunnels aren't that big. Even Wrigley. I mean, Wrigley's just, they roof walk those halls, but there's no, there, you can't fit more than one person down the hallway. That's crazy. All All the history. All the history. So a young, a young Kevin. So who who did you look up to growing up as as a ball player? Who who did you look up to? Um, well, not, that's a young ball. I looked you know, I looked up to my brothers when I was a kid. They're ten and fourteen years older than me, so I kind of had that separation to be able to watch them. Um, as far as professional athletes, Mike Schmidt was always my favorite. I'm, I'm a homegrown Philly kid. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike Schmidt was my favorite growing up. Sorry about that. My daughter's banging on the table. Not a problem. Um, yeah, I was Mike Schmidt growing up. Um, I've, always been a, I've always been a hockey guy, actually, first. I love hockey. Okay. And Tim Kerr was my favorite flyer growing up. And Mike Quick was my favorite eagle growing up. And I actually got to meet. I met two of the three, so I never met Tim Kerr, but I have met Mike Quick and uh, and, and uh, Mike Schmidt. And I got to get to sit down and talk to Mike for a while. You know, what was that like? I know m- growing up as a kid, my favorite baseball player was Dale Murphy. And I've, over the years, become friends with Dale, you know, and chatted with him on multiple occasions. And I'm just, you know, amored. Every time I sit down with him, it's just, you know, stars in my eyes, even though he's just one of the guys. So you're from, so you're an Atlanta guy? I, you know, I actually, I, I am a Braves fan, but I, I've worked with the Giants. Um, and I, I did some video for them, and uh, I've worked as a clubhouse manager in minor league system and stuff like that. So I'm just a big baseball fan. I, you know, oh, okay. I, I'm a Braves guy. I'm a Giants guy. I'm a Diamondbacks guy. You know what? I really like what the Royals have got going on right now, the Pirates, the Astros. You know, I'm really excited about baseball right now. Baseball is in a pretty good place. Yes. You know, you got. Yeah, you I got, Todd Frazier winning the home run derby last night. And what is not to like about Todd Frazier? Yeah. And it's it's like, you know, going back to a kid, you know, being a kid again, you know, with growing up with watching Mike Schmidt play, watching Dale Murphy play, Pete Rose. You know, it, baseball is in good hands with uh, with the younger guys. 
Yes, but there are those younger guys too that have zero respect for the game of baseball. Absolutely. I'm not going to I'm not going to mention games, but I'm not names, but there are guys that deserve a pitch in the ear hole every night. I and I agree. I I agree with that, and you know, and that and it's pretty easy to tell who, who who's who. But yes, and it's unfortunate the umpires are the hands are tied because they would let the pitchers and the team sort it out, you know. Right. They would let you know, but now they're warnings and everything else. You know, instead of opposed to just letting them just throw it right in the guy's ear and that's it. Well, and that's the way the game was played back, you know, twenty, thirty years ago. Yes. You know, I mean, you know, Nolan Ryan throwing at somebody, you know, because of the disrespect. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't go on, you know. But so you're gonna be watching the All Star game tonight? No, I don't watch baseball. You don't watch baseball anymore? So you, like you said, you're a hockey guy. So you, I'm sure you watch yeah, hockey. hockey yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I watch. I love hockey. But I'll take my son. We'll go over there. We'll go. You know, I'll take the kids. We'll go to a game for a little bit. But I can't really watch it. Okay. Do you have a favorite man? Is there like a a certain manager that you really enjoyed playing with? I know some people don't like you know sorting people out and and uh, pointing them out, but do you have a favorite manager you played for, minor leagues or majors? Um, it's probably a tie between Bobby Jones and Bruce Crabb. Okay. Bruce Crabb was my rookie ball manager, and then Bobby Jones was my Triple A manager, and then he was a bench coach. He was a coach with me in, in the big leagues with the Rangers. So I mean, both of those guys are probably those are my two favorite. Those guys were, you know, they both played the big leagues, um, understood it, but at the same time, were you know kind of reserved. You know, if you, if you get up the line, they're gonna let you know, but at the same time, you go out and do your job, they're just gonna leave you alone. So if I if I'm not mistaken, Bobby Jones had the big old mustache, didn't he? I'm sorry. Bobby Jones had the big old mustache. Yes, sir. He still does. Okay. All right. Former Met and uh, among other teams, I believe. So yeah, I, I know you. Yeah, I mean, he actually about. grew up in the town next to me. Oh, in really? Delaware. He grew up in Elkton, Maryland. Yeah. And so did you? I mean, did you meet him before? Prior to that? No. Nope, no. Nope, never. Not wow. before that at all. Wow. What was what was the best advice that anybody has ever given you? Gosh, I can barely remember last week, and you're asking me that question. That's a tough question to ask, answer too. I need some time. You need that next time. You need to give me a little heads up, and I can think about that for Absolutely. a while. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we we would definitely love to talk to you when you have a little bit more time. And um, oh, absolutely. You know, I, you know, I'm definitely. You know, the years you were playing, um, huge baseball fan. Um, I I want to know who gave you the nickname Shrek. Rusty Greer. <laughs> Rusty Greer. All right. And so, what is, do you know what Rusty's doing these days? What? what yeah, is I see Rusty at the ballpark. He lives, he lives about 10 miles from me. Okay. And is he, is he coaching or? No. He's got, he's got three kids. So they're, they're older now. So they're, you know, they're running around doing all kinds of stuff. So he was another great baseball guy. Yes. Former Ranger. Yeah. He was another one. And so I'm a huge baseball card collector, and so all these, you know, all these older guys, you know, Rusty Greer and, um, you know, who is it, Johnny Grubb, you know, former Ranger. Um, man, it's like being a kid again. Well, I appreciate you uh, coming on, and we'd definitely love to have you on and, and chat with you some more. Absolutely. Just let me know. All right. That sounds good. So once again, Kevin hey. Minch and the pride of uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Have a good afternoon. All right. All right. You too. All right. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. So once again, Kevin Minch. Man, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the roster from 2003. So we're talking about Mark Texera, Michael Young, Alex Rodriguez, Hank Blaylock, Shane Spencer, who played with Scott Brocious, Ryan Christensen, Juan Gonzalez, and Palmero are the starters. And then also on the bench, you had Carl Everett, Todd Green, Lance Nix, Doug Glanville, Ruben Sierra, um, Mike Lamb, Chad Croyder, and the pitching staff. Man, I mean, this team this team was loaded. You had um, Chano Park, Ari Dickey was on that team. Man, that's, that's crazy. Alan Bennis, you remember Alan Bennis? Remember the Bennis boys? So, once again, we are sponsored by 
Baseballism.com. Check it out. They have a store up in Portland, Oregon on Interstate Avenue. They also have one in Cooperstown, New York, and just opened one up in Hotlanta. So Baseballism.com. Mark Canham with MDM Design. Check him out. Brian's throwing me curveballs here, but I can hit a curveball. So Base by Pros, Baseballpros.com. Mitch Canham. Check it out. BaseballDudes.com. To be the best, you must train like the best. Chris Gazelle up there in Vancouver, Washington. And we always stream live at YamhillToday.com. Check us out. If you want to put your ad up on the show, give me a call. Email me, normbo18gmail.com, and we'll talk. And once again, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Clubhouse Chatter with Norm. We're on YouTube. And go ahead and shoot me an email, clubhousechatter18 at gmail.com. I'm Norm. That is producer Brian. We love the game of baseball. And be expecting some uh, different things coming up from us. So we're talking a little bit about football now. And, uh, you know, I'm a baseball guy, but hey, I like football as well. So we will see you next week. And uh, check us out. Talk to you later.